So, kind of caught you guys on after the Monday practice. Um, I think a couple things we've, we've done well since then is we had a, you know, a really good Thursday night practice, um, tough physical practice, and then turned right around uh, yesterday, Thursday, and, and we're outside at 2.30 for the entirety of it. And I was really proud of the guys um, in their work. Uh, that was, that was a definitely a hot day. Um, but, but they came with it, and you know, I think one of the challenges on days like that, it's not necessarily, like I said before, the physical condition, it's the mental condition, right? To stay focused uh, in some of the extreme measures that you have. It could be the heat, it could be the cold, it could be the wind, it could be whatever it is, the setting that you're playing in. So um, continuing to work on that, and um, that we had a really fast practice today, good tempo, good energy, and we'll get back out tomorrow for our second scrimmage. How will the second scrimmage differ from the first? Uh, a couple different um, kind of scenarios that we, that we want to get better at, uh, that we want to work on. Um, some of the substitution things, game-like substitutions where you're rolling um, situations as they come, whether it's low red zone, then you got to go to goal line, then you go for two. There's a lot of substitutions that have to happen there and getting those mechanics done from the sidelines in the moment things like that that we'll work on on top of playing the game, you know, and, and really working the game, whether it's the two-minute scenarios, um, you know, third, fourth down type work there, uh, which I thought we did a good job of last week. But uh, because of how big it is in college football right now, I want to make sure we're, we're really dialed on that. So it'll look probably very similar, uh, but there's going to be little things along the way that, that will be different. We've got that defense obviously played well in, in the last grade, and it's always tough when it's just – you guys versus one another. Do you want to see a little bit more from your offense? You want to see a little bit of limiting of the turnovers? I like, I like both sides of the ball. You know, I mean, obviously, when you run 130 plays, um, you're, you're going to have some turnovers. It's how those turnovers occurred is what I'm trying to clean up. Um, like I said, I thought the defense had a really good segment um, in, the, in the third down, fourth down portion of, of it last week, which is, which is important for us. Obviously, we've got to clean up the, the quarterback scramble things and then, you know, the, the, the red area, which I thought the offense was relatively effective last week. So you're always working on both. Um, and in the end, it's, it's can we, can we, can we you know, adhere to the task at hand when the moment calls for it? And that's what I'm trying to figure out, not only collectively but individually, of how guys respond, what's the communication like in those scenarios when they come up. So much later, your, your defensive line is, you know, being very disruptive. Can you, how do you tell how much progress your offensive line is making, especially in the interior where Flood said he wanted to, you know, get stronger? Um, okay, so, you know, I think, I think the interior defensive line um, is, is playing really well. And we've got some, we've got some uh, really good players in there, obviously, you know, when you start talking about, you know, Byron Murphy, you know, Sweat, what he provides. Alfred's playing at a high level. I think Jare Bledsoe has stepped up. You know, Vernon, you know, definitely explosive in there. So there's a, there's a variety of guys in there. Um, you know, and, and inevitably, that's great for the, for the offensive line. You, you want to go against really good people every day. You want to get pushed. Um, you know, I, I, you know my, my, my goal is that when we kick the ball off in real games that we're playing at a high level. And to do that, we have to make it competitive. You know, we have to make sure that our receivers are taxing our secondary. we got to make sure that the linebackers are rushing really good so that the runners learn to pass protect. we got to make sure that, you know, our, our tight ends are a problem, uh, not only in the run game and the passing game. So it all kind of flows and works together. Um, and there's going to be moments and days when, you know, one side has the advantage over the other. Um, so, and I think that that's happened up front. You know, we, we've had days we ran the ball well and been really effective, and other days, you know, that, that, that defensive line's had their moments too. And, and that's the beauty of having a, a good team and a team that's balanced on both sides of the ball, that they can push one another and, and raise each other's level of play as the days go. Coach, of those 132 plays, how did you work in special teams and how are you looking to we have, we have special team segments throughout, you know, whether, you know, as we'll, we'll scrimmage and then we'll have a kickoff coverage portion, then we'll scrimmage and we'll have a punt portion, we'll scrimmage, punt return, so on and so forth. You know, we let the field goals play out as they come within the scrimmage. Um, we'll get plenty of opportunities at that, whether it's the first field goal unit, the second field goal unit. So, um, you know, I'd like to think it's pretty well organized and, and we, we kind of get all the phases done that we need to get done. Speaking of special teams, what, what do you like about Jackson as a special teams coach? 
Well, I think there's two things. One, he, he puts in the time and the effort. You know, we're, we're very organized. Um, you know, he's got a real plan. Um, I think he does a really good job of fitting our personnel to the scheme and getting the right people in the right spots to do what they do really well. Um, I think he does a nice job of recognizing players that may not be always frontline starters, but play with a style on special teams where they can find a role. Uh, Keaton Crawford, Mo Blackwell, the guys of that nature. Uh, and then inevitably, I, I, I love kind of a, the attitude that he brings and the aggressiveness, because I think that's half of special teams. You've got to have players that want to be on teams. And I think, I think Jeff creates an environment where our, our guys want to be on special teams. They, they love what he brings. They love the energy. They love the fact that we're going to scheme people. Um, but yet he's going to demand maximum effort every time that we go. And uh, I think you, you tie it all together with his organization. I, I think that, that's why he's really good at what he does. Steve, you think about that, could you talk about Sanborn and Auburn and St. Louis and Auburn and the second part of that, just some of the guys on coverage and units you think are going to impress Yeah, no, I think you know, we're, we're fortunate in that you know, when you look at all kind of three phases of it, and I say three phases of the kicking game, when you, when you talk about you know, your punter and Sanborn, his experience, um, is is invaluable for us, you know, uh, that guy that it's not going to be too big for him and does a really good job with his directional punts, which is important in our punt coverage. Um, obviously, Bert, the experience that he got last year, especially as the year went on of, of making some, some nice big kicks for us. And, you know, St. Louis is probably one of the most improved guys that we had. You know, having been a true freshman last year, I think that the weight room's been good for him. You know, his, his, you know, the power in his leg is definitely evident on kickoffs and in the field goal game. So that's a nice combination of guys that we have there. Sanborn can kick off as well. So a lot of moving parts there. I think coverage-wise, in my opinion, we have the two best gunners in the country. You know, Keaton and Keelan are phenomenal in the punt game and their coverage units. Um, you know, I think our kick coverage has been tremendous uh, for the last couple of years and the goal is that we stay that way and that's a mentality. You know, what we're, what we're striving for is how do, we, how do we maximize the return game more, right? Where, where do we find more plays in the, in the kick return and in the punt return game? We know um, we can go after punts and that we can attack punts and we're aggressive that way. Uh, and in turn, it should create more opportunities for us in the return game. So that's been a point of emphasis of ours. Coach, um, how much do you weigh, you know, scrimmage performance versus what a guy does in, in practice? Is the scrimmage performance weigh a little bit more in your evaluation process? Well, I think, I think it's all part of the process. You know, sometimes you find out about the guys that, uh, you know, they're good in practice, but yet they're really good in scrimmages. Sometimes you find out the guy that's not very good in practice, but is good in scrimmages. Sometimes you find out about the guy that's so good in practice, not very good in scrimmages. Our job is to find out the why. And if we can figure out the why that is, then we can help him one way or the other, either practice better to improve his game, or um, you know, if he's not great in the scrimmages, what's his, what's his pre-scrimmage routine to get himself you know, ready to perform there. So. Um, Again, we're looking for consistency, and I think that that's all part of it, whether it's, whether it's practice, whether it's meetings, whether it's scrimmage, ultimately whether it's game. Um, you know, because the more guys that we have that can play at a high level that we can count on, that, that's the most important thing for us. It's a long season, and it's a physical season, and so we're just trying to build this depth. It's one thing to have depth in potential. It's another to have depth in production, and that's what we're trying to do. When, when you have another scrimmage next week, or is next week more like a long <clears throat> kind of thing? Next week will be a mock game, so we'll do all of the, the, the kind of pregame routine rituals. Um, will be a lot of situational work next week, a lot of substitutions. Um, but getting them into the, into the routine of true game-like setting with, with the timing and the clocks and the timeouts and all those types of things. Have you seen any separation to running back yet for your either name of starter or first starter? No, we're, we're not there yet. I think that to be fair to those guys, they need another, need another day tomorrow. I, I do know this. we got plenty of guys that can play, and that's, that's a positive. Um, but I look for a lot of, lot of different things. You know, like today we did had a heavy two-minute situation where how do guys respond in that scenario? What does that look like? What do they look like on the goal line and in short yardage? You know, what do they look like on regular downs? What do they look like in third down and pass protection? So inevitably, you know, who are the best at what? And then maybe early on that's how we kind of have to play them some. Or if one guy's better at three of the four, Hey, that, that, then it makes life a little easier. But that's what we're trying to figure out. So, so you're the best pass protector on the offensive line and at running back. 
Kelvin's really good on the offensive line. Not to take anything away from from Christian, I think he's been he's done a nice job. You know, I think we got three or three backs right now in, in pass protection. Whether you talk about Jonathan Brooks, um, I think Cedric really has a good feel in pass protection, and quite frankly, I think Keelan's really good. You know, he he knows how to use his body and his power to uh, to protect, and he's smart. Sorry, kind of thinking back on the mock game situation. Have you given yourself a an opportunity in practice or scoring situations to get a feel for the, how the clock rolls this year? Yeah, no, we've been doing a lot of that. Um, we actually had a really good segment of that today. So we've been, we've been working with that. You know, inevitably, the clock rules really don't affect the game in the midst of the game. It, what it affects is less amount of plays, right, to, in totality by the end of the game. But where it comes into the effect is, is understanding that kind of two-minute marker of, of kind of – they're going to be slower to, to start the clock after a first down when you get in the final two minutes of the first half uh, and, and in the fourth quarter. And so getting the players and getting the quarterback to understand that mechanism. Um, but also, you know, how do you, how you manage your four-minute offense when you have a lead late in the game of, you know, now all of a sudden that clock is going to dwindle quicker or if you're behind. And so we're trying to instill that in the players as well. With fewer plays, does that change anything in terms of, you know, play calling on third down, fourth down decisions, or is that kind of standard? I don't, I don't know if it changes it inevitably, but it's, I think it's players understanding why efficiency is so important. You, know, there's, you don't have time, like in the NFL, it, you don't want to waste plays, you know, because you don't know how many you're really going to get, depending on how both teams play. Um, and so, you know, all of a sudden you get into a game and you're, you might have 50, 55 plays if both teams aren't going fast, then you got to make those plays count. And so you just don't want to waste plays and you got to be really efficient. Coach, you guys want you have so many freshmen who seem to be having kind of an instant impact, kind of dipping at the heels to get on the playing field. So can you just talk about the, the freshman class and have they kind of exceeded some of your expectations? Um, you know, I think the one thing about this class in, in general, I think it's very competitive. I think these guys are um, a competitive group. They play hard. They go hard. And that, I think that's a credit to the coaches, too. Of, of instilling that in those guys to go. Um, but I also think it's a credit to our older players because they've understood how we like to practice. And so I think it's made it a little bit easier for the young guys to be like, oh, this is how we work, and they've been going for it. And so um, I do think there's a lot of quality players in the class. Um, you know, time will tell how much, you know, they impact the game when we, when we get to the games, obviously some more than others. Uh, but that doesn't mean over time, and we look back at this class, you know, three, four years from now, you know, hopefully there's a, there's a lot of production, whether it's at the line of scrimmage, on offense or defense, you know, in, in playmaking ability and things of that nature. But, but I think up to this point, I've been very pleased with, with what this class has brought. Anybody assert themselves a leader or just asking for a for a freshman? Um, it's kind of, kind of difficult right now to say one guy stepped up but I do think they 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 come with a really good mentality and they're not all perfect yet um, but I, I do think they come with the right mentality to work thank you guys thank you, thank you.